Uh, good morning. As you know already, we've been looking at influence lines uh, for statically. We looked at statically determinate structures to begin with, uh, introduced the concept of the Mueller Breslau principle, and then we have spent the last two lectures looking at influence lines for statically determinate. Again, to reiterate, and this is the last time I'm going to say it, qualitative influence lines, Mueller-Breslau principle, quantitative, only direct approach. And the direct approach, we saw that the moment distribution method gives us the quickest way of computing. So, let us now continue looking at influence lines and we're going to look at, if hopefully we'll try to look at one or two examples in this particular lecture. So, I'm going to be moving a little bit faster because by now uh, I don't have to reiterate every small step that I take. Why am I releasing? Why am I doing this? By now you should be able to uh, be fairly comfortable with that. Okay? So, let us take an example. And now we are going into real examples. And the load only moves, load A to B, it only moves in A, B and C. Okay, vertical load, so it only moves between A, B and C. Uh, the flexural rigidity for this is E i, the flexural rigidity for this is E i and the flexural rigidity of this is 2 E i. Okay? And we are given the fact that bending moment positive is this way and bending moment uh, this is a positive, okay. Okay. So, uh, this is shear force positive, shear force, and this is bending moment, okay. This, this span is 4 meters, this is 4 meters, and this is 8 meters height. Okay? Uh, we have to find out influence line for RA, for MD, for RD, and for the bending moment and the bending moment and shear force. Bending moment at E and shear force at E. This is the center point. It's two meters. Okay. So, this is the problem. Both qualitatively uh, find out the influence lines for this. So, for these are qualitative and quantitative find out R A and bending. So, only quantitative is R A and B. Qualitative all of the others. Okay. So, let us go through these uh, step by step, okay. Uh, we can do this reasonably uh, quickly, okay. Qualitatively, let us look at what happens. For R A, 
what we have to do is this is the system again for RA this goes up this point goes nowhere and so what we get let me do it using the red pen you get note that this goes and this is fixed so this has to be like this goes like this fixed goes and this is going to be less because this also has to go however the influence line is only over here okay so this is the influence line for RA then if we want to do it for a bending moment MBA um, this is for MBA this is going to be uh, let me draw that draw it this way MBA what happens is that this goes this way and this goes this way where this and this has to be one that is the bending moment this is for M B A okay uh, then we need to find it out for R D for R D what do we do think about it we release this and push this up by one push this up by one this goes up by one okay and uh, what's going to happen is that uh, this is going to go and this is going to be 1 and this is A B C note that always A B C we don't care what happens to this part because the load does not travel on that is that clear so for even if you have a frame uh, it's the influence line is only to be drawn the shape that the part on which the load travels that is the only part that comes into the influence line remember that never forget that so even if I've shown a frame here I'm only drawing the influence line for ABC because that's the only position uh, is that's the only kind of extent the load travels we've been given that okay and then finally uh, for MD for MD okay it's going to be this has to go So this is going to be this way and so our thing will be this way and the influence line this has to be equal to 1 but note that the influence line is this so even though we've drawn this part it has no role to play this is my influence line remember that this is for M D although I have given this as my one as obvious okay so I'm not going to uh, draw um, any more let me okay let me just draw the uh, bending moment at E for your uh, benefits and so uh, bending moment at shear force let me draw that okay so if I have bending moment at A then this is going to go straight and then this is going to go in this fashion okay uh, where this straight line and this 
is going to be equal to 1. Okay? So that is going to be for bending moment at E and for the shear force at E it's going to be this. And the shear force positive is this being pulled down and that being pulled up. So it's going to be this way. Of course, this is going to go this way, but who cares? Again, this is the only part that matters. This is going to go this way. It's going to be less than uh, if this didn't exist because this stiffness reduces that. Okay, that's all. So this is for the shear force at. So qualitative influence lines is fine. Now we need to go into computation of uh, this for um, this thing. So now the thing that we need to know is that uh, which from which position uh, does this go? And let us look at that. So quantitatively, we need to know that this goes A B B C. So therefore, when it goes A B, fixed end moment B A. When it goes B C, it's going to be fixed B C and C B. But C B is anyway fixed. Okay, so it doesn't matter whether C B is fixed or not. So therefore, the, uh, we don't apply a fixed end moment. That fixed end moment is going to go directly. And at A, B, we do not provide because A, M, A, B is always going to be equal to 0. So therefore, the only ones that we need to provide are B, C and C, B. And so let us uh, put together our I'm just going to show you notionally because I'm not going to uh, do it uh, precisely. Okay, uh, what we have is I'm applying, and remember, uh, this one there's nothing. This one it is. Then here we have this. For this we have this side, and. This is 1.0. Okay, and then uh, what were the? Uh, just let me go back and have a look. This is EI and 4 meters. So this is going to be uh, I upon L, 3 fourths of I upon L. So this side we have 3 fourths of I by 4. This side we have I upon L. So we have I upon 4 and this side we have 2I upon 8. So, so this is going to be 3 by 16, I plus I upon 4 and I upon 4. So what we have then is a 4 for 11 by 16. So 11 by 16. So 3 upon 16 divided by 11 upon 16 is 3 by 11 and this is 4 by 11, 4 by 11. So what we have is point two seven two. This is going to be point three six. Four and point three six four. This is going to be point seven to eight. Yes, point three six four. Okay. So these are the distribution factors that you have over here. The first one is going to be plus hundred here, zero here, zero here, and of course this is zero, and so is this. Okay. So we need to distribute it and so we distribute it. This becomes minus 27.2 minus 36.4 minus 36.4. This one 
goes here to minus 18.2. This one goes here, so this becomes this. This becomes minus 18.2. And that's it. So, what now? We go on to the next one. And there's the same thing that we have. So, it's going to be 0 0.364, 0 0.364, 0 0.272. And this time, this is plus 100. This is 0, this is 0, this is 0. And so is this. Okay, so now when we do this, this becomes minus 27.2, minus 36.4, minus 36.4. This becomes minus 18.2. Close, close, close. Nothing goes here and here we get minus 18.2. So if we look at this, we see that M B A is equal to point seven two eight of M B A and minus point two seven two of M. BC. This is the fixed end moments. Then M B C is equal to <coughs> point sorry minus point three six four M B A plus point six three six M B C and M C B this is the moment at that end is going to be equal to minus point one eight two M B A minus point one eight M B C and plus MCB. Note that I have not done this uh, moment distribution. Why? Because at a fixed end moment, if I apply uh, a fixed end moment, what is going to be the moment? The fixed end moment. So that's going to be directly this and it's not going to get distributed anywhere else. Okay. So these are the expressions that I get from my moment distribution. Okay. Because if you look at it, if this is 100, then this is 72.8, this is minus 36.4. By the way, I have not done the others. Why? Because uh, those don't, in this particular case, I have only asked you to find out RA and bending moment at E. If I had asked you to find out MD, then you would of course have got it in terms of minus, let, let me do that, let me do that, let me find out MD, so that I would need to find out M D C would be equal to minus point one eight M B A minus point one eight two M B C. That's what M D would be. Okay, so we'll we'll find that out. Okay. So I've got these. Now once I've got these, then the next step is of course the same uh, procedure that we've already gone through and uh, without much ado, um, I'm going to, we've already done this in the previous case. We know that if 0 is less than x is less than L, then fixed end moment at B A is going to be equal to minus x squared L minus x upon L squared 
I'm sorry, minus half L minus X squared into X upon L squared. And fixed end moment at BC is equal to zero. If L is less than X is less than 2L, fixed end moment BA is equal to zero. And fixed end moment BC is equal to x minus l into 2l minus x squared upon l squared plus half x minus l the whole squared into 2l minus x on l squared so if you do this, then uh, note that the only thing that we've been asked to find out are three quantities. And those three quantities, if you look at it, is MD. MD at all times for 0 less than x is less than L by 2 is equal to MDC. Okay? Now, the, what's the other ones? The other two things that I have been asked to find out are uh, RA, RA. Okay, so I need to find out RA. So let's see what RA is going to be. RA, I have over here MBA. Okay, and uh, mm, R A. I'm only interested in finding out R A. Uh, so therefore, and the bending moment at E. Mm -hmm. So um, when um, when when load is between zero and x by L, R A is equal to one minus x by L plus MBA by L. We've already done this. I'm not going to go into that. When uh, L X is between L and 2L, RA is equal to MBA by L. That gives me the expressions for RA. Now for the bending moment at A. When load is between 0X and L by 2, bending moment at E. Let us look at what bending moment at E would be like. You would have bending moment in this fashion. Right? So, if we look at it, MBA, and the load is over here, and so X is between, and you have RA here, and this is bending moment. So, if, if it is between this and this, and I take a moment about this point, uh, then what do we get? We get RA into L by 2, that is being the thing. So it's RA into L by 2. And here we have this one going the opposite way. So this is going to be minus uh, 1 into L upon L minus X. Okay, so this is the bending moment and uh, you can see that this is also equal to uh, if you look at it MBA okay uh, minus uh, X by L into L by 2 X by L into L by 2 is minus X by 2 so we can actually put it in this fashion that if you substitute into this you will see that this is exactly the same as this you know so there's nothing there's nothing new in it okay, okay. so we will probably use this this is an easier one to use okay what happens when um, x uh, is uh, when x is between l by 2 to 2l bending moment 
is just equal to R A into L upon 2. Okay. So once I have this, then I can uh, write it down. And this time I'll, I'll do it with L by 4 so that we can actually find out more, more details. Okay, so this is going to be x and uh, the the overall uh, distance that it travels is from 0 to 8 so i'll have 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 okay and uh, the each one is going to be the first one that we have to find out R M B A and M B C. These are the fixed end uh, moments. Those are the first things that you have to evaluate. Once you evaluate that, if we look at it, we need look at this. So all we need to do is evaluate M. DC and MBA because these are the only ones that we need. Okay, so we're going to do that. So I'm going to evaluate MDC and MBA. I don't need to evaluate any of the others. And that will give me directly MD RA. And the bending moment at E. The bending moment at E. So let me now do this. Okay, so we've done this. Now uh, we know that MBA, MBC is going to be zero between while the member goes between zero and four. Okay, and we also know that MBC is going to be zero when it travels between four and eight. Okay, and of course this is when it's at the end, these are going to be zero. So all we have to do really is evaluate uh, these and uh, this one we know is 3 by 16 and this is negative and this is going to be positive 3 by 16. I'm sorry. Uh, here, plus 6. This is not correct. This is plus 3 by 16 at the center span. So let's find out at 3 quarter span. And so I'm going to plug in uh, the value of x equal to 1 fourth in this. So when I plug in 1 fourth, I get 1 upon 16. This is going to become uh, 1 minus. So this is going to be 3 fourths. Okay, and this is going to be uh, 9 upon 16, and this is going to be 1 fourth. Okay, so what we have over here is uh, 3 upon 64 uh, minus, and then we have minus half of 
9 upon 128. So this is going to be equal to uh, 6, so minus 15 upon 128. And the other one with 3 fourths is going to be just the opposite. So this is going to become, uh, this is going to become 9 upon 64 minus, and the other one will become uh, 3 upon 128. And so when we do this 18, we get minus 21. So what you'll have here is that since we are doing this thing, this is going to be uh, eighteen and three, yeah, plus twenty. So this is going to be plus twenty one upon one twenty eight, and this is going to be plus fifteen upon one twenty eight. If you look at this, this turns out to be as the load comes in, the bending moment increases, and this is more and this is less. Okay, so now let us look at um, directly MDC. Uh, okay, so this one, if you really look at it, uh, this is this into L, so this is going to be 60. So this is going to be uh, 4, so this is going to be, we'll have to do this again, this will be 32. This is into L. L is 4 here. Okay, so this is 3 upon 4. This is going to be 21 upon 32. 21 upon 32. 3 upon 4. 21 upon 32. So if we write those down in numbers, you will see that you get point four, one twenty-eight twelve, uh, twelve. So that's going to be uh, 4. Point 0.44, four. this is going to be point 0.75 and this is going to be equal to um, point 0 0.6. Uh, 6 will make it 192, that's going to give me 12, so it's going to be point 0.64. So this is going to be um, minus, 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 this is going to be minus 0.64, it's going to be minus 0.75, it's going to be minus 0.44. So when we plug those values in here, in MDC, you get minus uh, 0 0.2 into point, 0 0.182 into 0 0.44, and if you look at that, that basically becomes a minus, so it's going to be plus, so plus point uh, zero uh, seven two so this is going to be zero eight okay and then if you do this uh, into three by four that's going to be a uh, point uh, seven five so this is going to be three by four uh, point uh, five five point five five uh, three uh, so it's going to be 0.55 divided by 4, that's going to be 0.14. And in 0.64, this is going to become, so this is going to be 0.11. This is going to be equal to 0, uh, and this is going to be minus, note that these are plus, 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 so this MDC is going to be minus, so it's going to be, minus of point one one. This way it's going to be minus point four one and minus point zero eight and zero. Let us look at uh, the uh, for M D. If you look at it, right? This one, if you looked at it, this is exactly how it looks. Okay? So, so this is MD, and uh, the point that I'm trying to make is this way you can find out uh, MBA, MBA, plug it in, and you'll get MBA, uh, okay, uh, and uh, then uh, you can plug in uh, these. Once you get MBA, 
you can find out RA values and you can find out moments. And so once you know this, see MDC is directly this. Okay, so now the, the point that we are trying to make over here is that once you put this factor in, okay, you can get RA and bending moment, you can get MBA, I'm not going to do all of this. So in other words, uh, you see the whole procedure, the overall procedure boils down to uh, three steps. First step is to determine where exactly are your uh, uh, loads. So in this particular case for example load is going from A to C. Now A is hinged. It cannot have a fixed end moment. When the mo so therefore when the load is between A and B you have a fixed end moment at BA. So therefore you need to do one moment distribution with BA. Then when it is between B and C you need to do the moment distribution, there is going to be a fixed end moment BC as well as CB. So you need to do a moment distribution with BC and CB. But note that the, there is no need to do MBC because that is a fixed end and you do not release that point. So there is no fixed end moment. Okay, so it only comes into M, uh, into M the, the, the moment at CB. Okay, so these are important points. So therefore, once you know which are the levels of moment distribution that you have to do. The next step, the next step is once you've done the moment distribution and you have to now write down what are the member end moments in terms of the fixed end moments. So those are the coefficients you found out from the moment distribution. Once you've written those down, then you need to do the equilibrium of each member and get it from there. Is that clear? Okay. So this is the step and now I am going to quickly look at another problem so that I can illustrate uh, some another type of problem to you. Okay. Right now we have set up the entire uh, step and now all we need to do is essentially put down the all the, uh, the values that you are going to get, okay? So that we don't need to do anything uh, anymore, okay? Uh, we were done with this. This is it. This. Just let me put my papers together, and then we will quickly move on to the next one, okay? So the next problem, let us look at, would be something like. Uh, let me take a particular example. Yes, let us take this example. We have I have this is A, this is B, this is C, and this is D. Okay. For this I have I, for this I have I, for this I have I. This is 4 meters, this is 3 meters, from here to here is 4 meters and from here to here is 4 meters. The, unit, the vertical load only goes between B and C and D. This is important. It does not go on AB. Is that clear? Okay. So it only, the vertical load only is in this zone. What does that mean? That when we draw the influence line, we only, we draw the deflected, Mueller, use the muller bresslau principle and draw, get the deflected shape. We only need to draw the deflected shape of BCD for the influence line. Okay. And let me now say, that the influence lines for MA, for 
R A okay then at E which is the center point I need for the shear force shear force the reaction at C and Okay, so R A N A V E R C and M D. Okay, so we have five for which we need to find out, and I will also uh, tell you that this I leave it as an exercise for you. You are going to do it yourself. You will qualitatively over this entire scope at one meter intervals you are going to find out for V E. I leave this to you as an exercise. I will give you the answer uh, to you but I will not go and solve the details. However, what I will do is I shall use the Mueller-Breslau principle and show you how this thing can be done. First R A. First R A. Okay. So now And this is, I'm going to make it a, a question that's going to become very, very important. Okay? Uh, and that's the reason why I have given you this particular problem for nothing else. This and this. Okay, so this is. Now here, uh, note that now this is going to become a roller, a fixed roller which is going to move in this direction. Okay? So this way it has to be equal to 1. What does that mean? That ideally this would go 1. However, this cannot move. So therefore, this has to now move perpendicular. Okay? And how much will the perpendicular be in terms? Think about it. If this is 1, then the perpendicular is going to be 3 by 4, so that this then becomes 5 by 4. And I'm going to draw the... So this is going to go like this. And I'm not going to draw this. This is going to go like this. And here, therefore, this is going to rotate in this direction if it has to move up. So it's going to not be, the tangent is not going to be this way. Tangent is going to be this way. So it's going to go like this. Go here and then go this way. And this is going to be 5 by 4. Note that this is my for R A. Okay? Note this very importantly and that is the whole reason why I have given this particular problem and that's why I have given R A in this direction instead of vertical. Vertical would have been very easy. I gave it in this direction for you to understand that when this has to go this way, you have to satisfy the uh, the boundary conditions. Remember that the Mueller-Breslau principle has to satisfy all the boundary conditions that you have in your specific problem. Okay, so this is this is the point. This was the whole point. Everything else is now trivial. However, I'm going to go through it with it. Okay, so let us look at the next one which is MA. So I'm going to do MA. MA means I rotate it. So this becomes now a hinge and rotate it one here. So how, how will it look? It will look like this. 
when this goes this way, this would tend to do a little bit, okay? And so this is going to be, and now this is where it becomes interesting. We know that this is one and this is the influence line. However, we know nothing over here. That is, I mean, qualitatively we know nothing. So this is for M A. Now for R C. Let me do it for R C. For R C it's going to be again and let me draw this and let me draw this okay for RC what are we going to do this is going to remain this this is going to remain this we're going to remove this and move it up and up by one okay so how will this thing look you will see that when this goes up this is going to go like this so this is going to go a little bit like this and so this is going to get a little bit like this. Probably this will have an angle this way, but this in a sense gives you the for RC. Okay? So now MD let's say make it for MD. Okay. For MD now what do I do? I release this, make it into a hinge. This is anyway a hinge. This is fixed make it into a hinge and then rotate it. And so what is going to happen here? You are going to see that this is going to go in this fashion and this is going to go this way and this way. So this is going to be where I know that this slope is equal to 1. This is the for MD and finally for the shear force and because this is important I'm going to draw this because this will give you the qualitative and then we have to actually get the quantitative also here. This is fixed. This is okay. this is fixed. And therefore, what we need to do is here, get it up and here, get this to go down. When you go, make it go down, this has to be, sorry, let me do it with the red pen. This will go in this fashion and go this way. This is going to go in this fashion. This and this have to be the same. So that this is going to be something like this. This doesn't matter. It is this, this and this and this total is going to be equal to 1. Okay. This is for V E. And finally, as I said, I am not going to put down, uh, I am not going to show you how I have done it, but I am going to put down for X. So X is moving from B to C to D at 1 meter intervals. So it is 1 meter here, 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 then here, here and here. So at one meter intervals I'm plotting it starting from here. My x starts from here. So 
for 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8. I am putting down this as x. I am putting down the derived values of VE for u. You are going to actually calculate it. For 0, this is 0. For 1, it is plus 0.2235. For this, for 2, uh, there's going to be a 2 a minus, and then there's going to be a 2 plus. For 2 minus, this is point plus point 0.5112. For 2 minus, it is point four eight 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 for three so this is for two for three it is minus point two zero six eight for four it's zero for five it's plus point zero eight zero three for this it's plus point zero seven three three this it's point zero two seven three and for eight it's zero I am going to leave this with you you have to solve this problem and get these V use this next time I'm going to do it in detail and show it to you don't wait for that Try to get these values using the procedure that I have developed for you. Thank you. See you next time. Bye.